Bet you could your 302 Joker and the Boys. So I read the Joker to talk about. I read the Boys just for pleasure. All six trade paperbacks, probably about 70, 80 comics. Uh, not something I do. Um, it's something I definitely enjoyed, and I'll have to see what I can get done this week. Uh, so Joker, written by Brian Azzarello, drawn by Lee Bermijo, is probably one of the best single trade paperbacks I own. It's the kind of book you give to people who you want to get into comics, who don't want to get into comics. It would be a fabulous movie. Um, God only knows who you get to play this version of the Joker, because it's pretty similar to Heath Ledger's, but he's a little bit dead right now. Uh, the story revolves around the Joker walking out of Arkham Asylum. No one quite knows why, um, but the point is he's back and he's uh, about to do the things that he does that makes him so popular and famous, both in Arkham and to the readers. Uh, the story is told through the perspective of his new getaway driver, Johnny Frost. Uh, the book begins and ends with him. Uh, it's very grounded. Um, it's his perception of what's going on, as well as some very interesting, slightly uh, updated takes of a lot of the main cast. One of the most terrifyingly sad things about this book is that in some method of production, I think this was made in Spain or Italy, they managed to fuck up the printing, which I didn't realise until after I'd put, purchased this thing. So a lot of the blurriness on some of these pages is the actual book. It's not bad scans. Uh, still an excellent book. I don't know if I'm going to rebuy another version of it, though. Uh, Johnny is like any criminal. He has a damaged life. This is him with his ex-wife who just wants him to sign the divorce papers to get him out of her life. Uh, this kind of characterization goes through everyone in the book. Everybody is a damaged person who doesn't really have any friends. Uh, but what Joker is, is a very charismatic, captivating intriguing leader of of people and this is this is johnny frost kind of being captured by the glamour of being associated with one of the most dangerous men in a very gritty urban gotham city joker's humor is remarkable in that much like heath leather heath ledger's joker nobody ever laughs at his jokes unless they think they're about to die if they don't but for the most part, it's situational comedy that you wouldn't dare laugh at because you'd get yourself killed. Uh, when he tells Penguin to be the bigger man, him being about four foot tall, after threatening to beat him to death with Killer Croc. Uh, an interesting take is the idea that the Joker fully believes Batman is watching him commit his crimes against other criminals um, and is somehow complicit in these actions. Uh, this is not Sean Gordon Murphy's Joker. This is the serial killer we all know and love. He goes on a rampage, uh, Johnny Frost, Frost, noting that he takes such pride in his handiwork. He does, even though he has a ton of henchmen, he does most of it himself. Uh, a fan of the craft, you might say. Um, Frost thinks he's on the up and up. Uh, killer Croc kind of, uh, let's just say, gut checks him at a certain point. And this is where Frost starts to realise that he's not in a movie. It's not all going to have a happy ending. He's not, and this isn't GTA, he's not going to get that big uh, apartment and all the flash cars. He realises he's he's maybe on the wrong side after Joker kills a mob boss, goes outside to start a one-sided conversation with Batman who's not there and puts a gun in his own mouth and pulls the trigger and then starts laughing. Yeah, like I said, it's the Joker we all know and love. Um, Frost finds himself caught between a rock and a hard place when a mob war is on the verge of breaking out between the Joker and Two-Face and both parties have made uh, inroads towards Johnny Frost uh, with Two-Face warning Frost that he's, he's going to die and the Joker's going to laugh and that's how this is going to end. Spoiler alert, this is how it ends. Um, about halfway through the book, um, the Joker has his first manic episode where, well, he basically attacks his own henchman and burns down hit one of his own hideouts. Uh it's gone into in the book why he would do this, but the point is he's great to work with uh, when he's great, but he's as dangerous as anyone else um, when he goes flip mode. There is a point in the book where the Joker's about to get shot by a cop. Johnny Frost shoots the cop and saves the Joker's life. And uh, by the end of the book, you'll see what that buys him. 
but um yeah speaking of the end of the book there's this guy maybe you've heard of him he's called batman he's not in this book until he is and when he is it's the first time you see fear on the joker's face everything falls apart very very quickly and you do not see it happen this is the way that batman elicits fear um the confrontation between the joker and batman at the end shows you just why the most dangerous man in gotham is more afraid of this guy in the big rubber suit this is this is how you make batman fans and uh yeah i look forward to reading it for a third time in 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 the future at some point so the boys i'm not even going to explain it's very controversial written by one of my best artists my best uh writers my favorite writers um it's about dudes who don't like superheroes and act as a kind of police force to, to fuck them up. It's very controversial, gritty and hilarious. I love it, but I can't be bothered to actually talk about it. I read it for fun. Um, to the point where I didn't really get stuck into that much artwork this week. So my bison, you know, is some kind of action scene that I never really fully figured out. I'm going to continue on with this next week. And I didn't manage to completely wrap up the final chapter of my manga I'm surprised I got this much done considering how long it, I just I was just enjoying reading the boys. Um, I've never gained so less as a result of my own personal uh, interests. So if I'm spending my time the way I've spent it this week going forward, it might be a bit of a depreciating value in terms of the amount of work I get done, but it will also cut down on the amount of time I spend doing things that are intentionally wasteful. So this has been a very interesting week. I know what my plans are for next week. We'll see what happens. That's the end of Petsu Kucha 302, and I will see you next time.